G'day guys, Watchplay is here. I've just got to say, Tears of the Kingdom is a fantastic game. But when I play on my Switch to my LG G-Sync enabled 65 inch OLED TV, it looks a little bit like this. Blurry! So this video is going to show you how to get your game looking like this on your Switch to something like this on your Windows PC. Potentially 4K, 8K and upwards with unlocked FPS and increased levels of detail. Beautiful. So we achieve this through the installation and setup of Yuzu Emulator, which this video is going to be a tutorial of, and I'll do it in four simple steps. Now, before I go on, I must preface this and say that achieving fidelity like this with high sustained FPS requires quite a powerful PC. But fear not, this video will also cater to potato PCs. So let's get started. So step one is to go to yuzu dash emu.org and click download. You will download the Yuzu installation file, which is this one right here. Double click on it. So here we can proceed to click install, but let me first touch on on what Yuzu early access is. So basically you can go to Yuzu's website, proceed to subscribe to their Patreon, pay a small subscription fee and you get access to a token, which you can paste in here that allows you to install Yuzu's preview builds. Now, I highly encourage doing this for two reasons. The first one is to support Yuzu's development team. And secondly, because Tears of the Kingdom is really hot right now and Yuzu is hard at work developing optimizations and compatibility fixes for Tears of the Kingdom. And sometimes in one day I've seen one, not two, but sometimes three updates to Yuzu Early Access. And often these come with tangible benefits and compatibility fixes to Tears of the Kingdom. So highly encourage subscribing to their Patreon. But for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna proceed with the free mainland build because we're cheapskates like that. Click install. Once it finishes installing, click exit and launch Yuzu. So when you start Yuzu for the first time, you will say something like this, encryption keys are missing, which basically leads us to step two of this guide, which is to follow the Yuzu quick start guide here by clicking it and by going through this guide you'll be able to obtain your encryption keys from your switch your switch's latest firmware as well as its games and associated updates now you simply click this and you follow this guide and you'll be able to obtain your necessary files from your switch so to demonstrate what those files might look like after you've dumped them from your switch following that guide you'll have your game files which in this case is zelda tears of the kingdom as well as its associated update your switch firmware files that look something like this, as well as your encryption keys. Now, I can't share these files with you. They are copyrighted materials and doing so would be promoting piracy. So please follow the Yuzu Quick Start Guide to obtain your keys, firmware and associate games the legal and honest way. This channel does not condone piracy at all. So after following that guide and obtaining such files, I'll show you next how to apply them to Yuzu Emulator. So first, go click on File, open Yuzu folder, then double click on the keys folder, open it up. Here, copy and paste your encryption keys and paste it in here. Click back, and then we're now going to navigate to NAND, System, Contents, and Registered. And here we're gonna copy the contents of the Switch firmware and paste them into this folder. Next, we're going to point Yuzu to our game directory. To point Yuzu to your game directory, simply double click this icon and navigate to wherever you put your Switch games. In my case, I put them here. So I'll select folder and you can see that Yuzu has now detected that I have Zelda Tears of the Kingdom in this game directory. Now, the next step is to install the associated updates for this game. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Simply click on File, Install Files from NAND, and navigate to where you dumped the associated game update from your Switch. In my case, it's here. I'm going to double click on the update for Tears of the Kingdom and click Install. It has installed and now the game update has been applied. Now that we've installed Yuzu Emulator, we have dumped the files from our Switch, including setting up and configuring our keys, firmware, and game and game updates. 
we can now proceed to step three, which is to configure our Yuzu graphic settings to optimize them for Tears of the Kingdom. So to get started, we click on Emulation, then click on Configure, then click on Graphics. From here, we are going to use these following settings. Please copy these settings. So API is Vulkan, the device is your main GPU. In my case, it's the GeForce RTX 4090. All of these are switched to on. VSync mode should be set to mailbox. NVDEC emulation is set to default, GPU video decoding. Full screen mode, I recommend exclusive. Aspect ratio is set to default. Resolution, now this depends on the power of your GPU. In my case, I've got a pretty powerful GPU. I will going to set 4X. But in your case, maybe you want to try 1X first, see how your performance goes. If it's really good, you can proceed to 2X and 3X. So this is something you can experiment with yourself. But for me, 4X. Windows adapting filter, change it to bicubic. Anti-aliasing method, set to none. Now we can proceed to the advanced tab here. For accuracy level, we want to set this to normal. AST recompression, set it to uncompressed, as it is here. The following, enable asynchronous presentation, set this to off. Force maximum clocks, unchecked. Decode ASTC textures, also unchecked. Enable reactive flushing, check that. Use asynchronous shader building, check that. Use fast GPU hack, leave that unchecked. And Vulkan pipeline cache, check that. Anisotropic filtering, you can set that to 16x. Now to confirm all these settings for graphics at advance, click OK. We can now proceed to step four of the setup, which is the final step, optimization mods. All right, in the video description below, I'll have links to three different tiers of mod packs for Tears of the Kingdom, and each one represents a target FPS for different types of computers. So 20 FPS mod pack is for potato PCs, as in lower tier PCs. 30 FPS is kind of middle of the road PCs and 60 FPS are for high end. Now you only have to pick one of these tiers and then one of the mods within them to apply to your game. Now for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna pick 60 FPS because I've got a higher end PC. And I will pick the native switch pack, all right? I will later at the end of this video describe what these other two packs are, but for the sake of simplicity, I will just pick this one here, which will work for most people. Double click on the zip file. Now copy the contents of all of these mods, all right? And then we're going to right click on Tears of the Kingdom in user emulator and go open mod data location. Here we are going to paste those mods in here. You want to extract the contents of that zip file into this mods folder. All right. You can now right click on the Legend of Zelda game and go properties and you can have a look at all the different mods that have been applied. Now you can simply go to emulation, configure, and connect your controller of choice. And then here we can connect, for example, with me, my Xbox controller. I click on input device, click on Xbox One controller. And here I can check that everything works and I can set these controls accordingly to how I like my controller set up and click OK. And from here, we can then right click and simply click Start Game and we can begin playing Tears of the Kingdom. All right, so we have now set up Yuzu from scratch and we are now loading into Tears of the Kingdom. And congratulations, we are now running Tears of the Kingdom at close to 8K resolution, in this instance, at 60 FPS. And it's looking beautiful. So if you use the Switch Pro Controller or the Switch Controllers in general, then you've basically completed this tutorial and you can go ahead and enjoy this game. But as I mentioned earlier, I promised to discuss 
what these other mod packs were and how to use them. So earlier you installed the native switch variation and what that indicates is the type of user interface that you're going to be having when you play Tears of the Kingdom on Yuzu. So in this case it was the native switch interface which shows the pro controller here. But if instead you like to use an Xbox controller, you can instead of installing this into the Tears of the Kingdom mod folder, you can go here, copy these instead and use the contents of these mods in place of the ones that you used here instead and then you will have your Xbox controller showing here as well as the game having Xbox UI elements throughout the rest of the game. Now this one here is a choose your own option so to use this you simply do the same thing you copy all these contents into the Tears of the Kingdom folder and then I'll actually provide a link in the video description where you can download your own user interface mods such as this one, the PS5 one. You can then scroll down, download the desired UI mod, and then also place the downloaded folder into the Tears of the Kingdom mods folder in addition to these ones. All right, so that basically shows you how you can choose your preferred UI, and that is one benefit of using Yuzu in that you can choose whatever user interface you like, and it can feel native for your controller input. So that is fantastic. So that basically concludes my video on how to set up Yuzu Emulator optimized for Tears of the Kingdom on your Windows PC, scaled from the potato PC all the way to the high end. Now I must mention that I've brushed over a lot of the deeper technicals of the individual mods and optimizations mentioned in this video. But if you're interested in that, you can go to this GitHub. I'm going to leave it in the description below and you can have a look at what each of the mods does, as well as optimizations and write-up of them in detail. In addition to that, this is just a really good resource on where to get the latest mods, as well as give credit to a lot of the contributors for this repository. So with all those things said and done, I'm going to do my best to keep all of the files in the listing description updated as much as possible, so that any of the things that I've mentioned to download in this video do not go obsolete but for whatever reason I cannot update them then I do direct you to the github repository that I mentioned earlier and those should have the most up-to-date and optimized mods for you. So I just hope that this video was helpful for you and if you did like it please rate, comment and subscribe it means so much to me especially that this is my first serious video and in the future, if you do like it, I do plan to create content on how to set this game up with Auto HDR, as well as talk about how to set up DLDSR, which is Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution for people that have NVIDIA cards. And that basically, in a nutshell, makes your game even look more crispy than it already is right now. So thanks very much. This is Waj from Waj Plays. Cheers.